first item of business is portfolio questions on education and skills. In order to get in as many people as possible, I would prefer short and succinct questions and answers to match. And if a member wishes to request a supplementary question other than on their own question, they should indicate that in the chat function by entering the letter R during the relevant question. And I call question number one, Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Scottish Government what its response is the concerns of the Equality and Human Rights Commission that the SQA's proposals for grading this year's qualifications may not be compliant with the Equality Act. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Officer, could I begin by welcoming you to your post? This is the first occasion in which I have had the opportunity to do that. The Chief Examiner has set out that fairness is one of the three core principles upon which the Scottish Qualifications Authority is approaching the awarding of qualifications this year, and the Scottish Government would expect that to be the case. The Scottish Qualifications Authority will meet its public sector duty under the equality legislation on their approach to certification, including publication of the equality impact assessment, as confirmed by the Chief Examiner in her written response to the Education and Skills Committee of the 21st of May 2020. Patrick Harvey. Well, I'm pleased that there's a commitment to further action because the Cabinet Secretary will be aware uh, of the Commission's submission to another parliamentary inquiry uh, in which they said, we remain concerned that the SQA have been unable to demonstrate that they have considered any equality issues in their work this year or that they have met their legal duties in this regard. Is the Cabinet Secretary telling us that the Equality and Human Rights Commission themselves have given an assurance that their concerns have been fully addressed uh, and that legal compliance has been achieved. Uh, and if not, uh, can the Cabinet Secretary acknowledge uh, that there is a risk that we send a signal to young people uh, that uh, their individual abilities will be considered less important than the uh, political objective of creating the, the look or the appearance of a, an average set of exam results? What would the Deputy First Minister say to any young person whose teacher believed they should pass, but who's given a fail by the SQA this August? Cabinet Secretary. The first thing I would have to make clear is that I cannot speak on behalf of the Equality and Human Rights Commission. The Commission must speak for itself. What I can represent to uh, Parliament is the fact that the SQA has a legal duty to undertake the appropriate Equalities Impact Assessment, and that will be undertaken. The SQ has committed to undertaking that work as it develops the model for certification, and as I indicated in my previous answer, fairness will be at the heart of that process. Uh, to young people, I would say that I acknowledge the uh, un uncertainty and the difficulty that the current environment poses for them. It is uh, not a circumstance of their making. And what the SQA will make sure is the case is that the quality of certification around the country uh, meets the required standards that we would all expect, so there is consistency across the country. And I am grateful to members of the teaching profession for the work that they are doing to make sure the SQA has the uh, information on teachers' judgments that enables them to arrive at that position. Supplementary question from Ian Gray. Thank you. The SQA have said that they will only publish their moderation scheme uh, on the same day as the results are published. Does the Cabinet Secretary think that is acceptable? Cabinet Secretary. I think that is the only appropriate time where the moderation process can be published, because it has to be published once the exam diet and assess the, the certification process has been completed and results have been awarded. Uh, Mr Gray will be aware, of course, that there is an appeals process available for uh, pupils within the SQA examination process. Um, schools will be able to make appeals on behalf of young people where they believe that the appropriate certification has not been undertaken, uh, and that service will be free to all pupils that are put forward for an appeal. Question number two, Beatrice Wishart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. 
to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the work of the COVID-19 Education Recovery Group. Government Secretary Johnson. Presiding officer, the Education Recovery Group have met regularly in recent weeks to discuss a range of issues regarding continuity of learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. Minutes of these meetings are routinely published online. The group provided advice on the strategic framework that sets out how a phased reopening of schools and early learning and childcare settings will be implemented. This document was published on Thursday, the 21st of May. I provided a statement to Parliament on Tuesday of this week to highlight this work in more detail, including the move towards a blended model of learning. Beatrice Russell. I'm worried about how we're going to avoid conflicts between the needs of businesses and the needs of parents. If pupils are returning to school part time in August, but their parents are being asked to be back at work full time, how are they to be covered for childcare? What happens where working from home is impossible, um, but your child is learning at home for a few days? Will there be any further provision available during a period of blended learning? And if so, who would pick up the cost? Cabinet Secretary. We are operating in quite extraordinary circumstances at the present moment, and the plans for the delivery of a blended learning model take into account the public health requirements, which are inescapable in relation to the necessity for uh, physical distancing within schools. What we have set out in the framework and also in the route map is that there must be, across a whole range of different sectors, an adaptation to the new um, environment in which we will be operating, which uh, for many parts of the different phases of the route map involve um, individuals carrying out work from home and employers undertaking um, the necessary changes to their working practices to enable that to be the case. So education is not just the only aspect of our society that will be delivered in a different fashion. The world of work will be delivered in a different fashion as well. And uh, the Economy Secretary and I, and through the Economy Secretary in dialogue with the business community, are involved in regular discussions about how that uh, relationship between education and business can be fostered in a way that adapts to these unprecedented circumstances. A supplementary question from Jamie Green. Thank you. Just following on from uh, Beatrice Wishart's question, the government's top line message today is that childminding and some nursery services can resume as early as next week. Uh, but the reality is, feedback I'm getting is that many are still in the dark about the specifics around this. The care inspectorate yesterday published a note that they're still waiting on government guidance. Uh, parents just simply need to know if they're able to go back to work next Wednesday or not. Uh, can I ask if the guidance for that sector could be published even as early as tomorrow? Rather than next week, just to give parents and child minors enough time to plan ahead. I think the guidance can only be published next week. Um, work is underway to complete that. We uh, are working to finalise the guidance on um, access to, to schooling to enable the development of the models for schooling to be undertaken. But uh, I give the assurance that that material will be available next week. To enable an early start to the childminding activities that are envisaged in phase one of the announcements that were made today. Question three, Murdo Fraser. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And to ask the Scottish Government how social distancing might be maintained should schools be reopened. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. So, also through the work of the Education Recovery Group, we will publish detailed guidance this week on how and what physical distancing measures should be implemented for a phased return to school in August. Murdo Fraser. I thank the, the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, response. I know the Scottish Government has said it will be unrealistic to expect the very youngest children to be socially distanced in schools, but I think there must be a concern even for older children. If they can be socially distanced in the classroom, how can that be maintained in common areas such as uh, lunch halls, in corridors, in toilets, and also in the playground? And also, what's going to happen with the issue of school transport when, in many rural areas, uh, children are transported to school by buses, minibuses, uh, or taxis? Cabinet Secretary. 
So, so Murdo Fraser's question raises a, a number of different scenarios, and of course, the the answer in each of these scenarios will be uh, slightly different. Obviously, when young people are outdoors, there is a very different approach taken uh, compared to the public health advice that's, that's available to us should they be indoors. Um, so the, the, the situation will vary from scenario to scenario. Um, where it comes to school transport, um, it is essential that schools explore with local authorities the necessary arrangements that have to be put in place to safely transport pupils to school. Now, in a blended learning model, not all of the, of the pupils that will be ordinarily transported to school on a daily basis will be transported in that fashion, because not all children will be attending school every single day. So uh, there will be detailed arrangements put in place uh, by schools and local authorities. There is obviously a multiplicity of different scenarios around the country, which is why the government and the Education Recovery Group opted to produce a strategic framework which enables uh, sufficient guidance to be given on the principles that need to be applied, and then for individual schools and local authorities to make the appropriate local plans uh, and to put those in place to meet the needs of individual learners. Question four, John McAlpine. Whether it will provide an update on how it is helping colleges and their students deal with the COVID-19 outbreak and to prepare for economic recovery. Minister Richard Lockhart. The Scottish Government recognises that this is a very anxious time for our students, and we are working closely with our colleges and student bodies to support the sector. Our Student Support Action Plan that was launched in April provides emergency funding of £5 million for students in hardship across further and higher education. And the Scottish Funding Council and the Student Awards Agency have also issued guidance to colleges that they can use these discretionary funds to cover necessary equipment and infrastructure and equipment costs for students who may otherwise be unable to continue their studies remotely. John McAlpine. I thank the Minister for that answer. Um, I, I recently met uh, senior management from the Priest and Galloway College in my constituency, and I know that the Minister has visited um, the college just before um, the pandemic uh, broke out, and he'll be aware that the college is very well placed to deliver virtual uh, learning. So I wondered if he could give us any idea as to what kind of support they would have to do that. They also emphasised that many of their students need laptops. They're used to working with phones, but you really need laptops for virtual learning. So what support can be given there? And finally, has thought been given to how colleges can help workplaces to designing courses that show how to safely social distance in the workplace? Minister. Uh, thank you to Joan McAlpine for the message. I know Dumfries and Galloway College is at the vanguard of Scotland's colleges in terms of uh, introducing remote learning. And given the area's rurality, of course, they have a lot of really good experience they can pass to other colleges in Scotland. We are paying very close attention to the whole issue around digital exclusion at the government and how we can help vulnerable families and, in the case of students, how working with students with the Scottish Funding Council and our College of Scotland, what we can do more to make sure that students do have access to connectivity and to appropriate equipment. Discretionary funds at the moment are being used to provide laptops and devices to students who need that. And I know, for instance, in, in Murray here, the local college where we are based, uh, issued 50 laptops to students who did not have any other means of getting a device for remote learning and remote teaching. So we're paying very close attention to this, and we're looking at further measures we can bring forward to make sure that uh, students have the necessary equipment. And I'm also meeting the broadband and data and telecommunication, telecommunication companies to see what they can do to help our students in terms of connectivity and costs. Much question five, Alex Rowley. Thank you, President Officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what support it will provide to the further education sector to help develop the skills of people whose employment has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Jamie Hickman. Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Government is actively working with the college sector and its agencies to respond to the skills and needs of those affected by COVID-19. 
This includes the provision of additional hardship funding for existing further education learners, investment of £5 million pounds for our most vulnerable families to tackle issues of digital access and connectivity, the launch of free to access online learning materials linked to a new helpline provided by Skills Development Scotland for those furloughed or unemployed, and is working to ensure colleges are best placed to deliver the retraining many will need as part of Scotland's economic recovery. Alex Ray. Thank you. I don't know about Mr Hepburn, but I am very worried about how we are going to move forward and the level of job losses that I do believe we will have. Going into next year, we could end up with unemployment levels, the likes of what we have never seen, certainly uh, for, for, for generations. So, what, what planning is actually starting to go on? Is there a skills audit? Are we starting to look at what industries uh, or what areas of the economy are not going to get back soon? What areas are going to have high levels of unemployment? And then create the opportunities for training and reskilling. Are we trying to get ahead of the curve? And are we looking at all these areas to look at how we tackle the economic crisis that is fastly heading our way? Minister. Thank you, President Officer. I should say yes, I share the concerns that Mr Rowley has laid out. I think we all recognise we don't know precisely the scale yet as to the economic downturn, but we are expecting a, a likely negative impact on unemployment and as laid out, I think it is likely to be more severe than we have seen for some time. Accordingly, we have started to begin undertaking a range of planning as to how the entirety of our skill system can respond to that challenge. We recognise that we're going to have to support people to gain the skills that they will require to get back into the labour market as quickly as possible. To that end, I have, and along with the Deputy First Minister, have had conversations with Skills Down Scotland around that area through the Enterprise and Skills Board, Nora Senior, in conjunction with Frank Mitchell, the, the Chair of Skills Down Scotland, are undertaking a, a piece of work to see what we might need to do further to support uh, that uh, form of economic recovery and retraining, and have engaged directly with the principles of Scotland's colleges to understand what more it might require to be done. The one thing I am confident is we have a strong foundation to build from. We have a good education and skill system which will help us to recover. But there is lots of work to be done, and Mr. Rowley can be assured that that work is underway. Question six, Annabel Ewan. Thank you, presiding officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how it plans to continue to promote modern apprenticeships in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Minister Jamie Hepburn. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Government has been working with Skills Development Scotland to offer support to apprentices, training providers and employers through the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We recognise the value of apprenticeships in supporting the training and upskilling of our workforce, which will be needed as we recover from the impacts of COVID-19. We will continue to promote apprenticeships and apprenticeship opportunities, building on our existing approach by utilising digital channels alongside physically distant work with partners across the education and skills pipeline to promote the value of work-based learning. Annabel Ewan. I thank the Minister for his answer and for his recognition of the importance of modern apprenticeships. Um, the Minister will be aware of the pivotal role that uh, Fife Developing the Young Workforce has played. So, Can the Minister provide an update as to what support is being made available to ensure that the pilot project of a Fife DYW coordinator in each high school can, in fact, continue, as surely this innovative and successful approach is needed more than ever in this very challenging uh, time for our young people. Yes, yeah, thank you, President Officer. Uh, I uh, share Ms Ewing's perspective that that is by the Fife Developing, Developing the Young Workforce Regional Group, who, under the leadership of Bob Garmery, someone that Ms Ewing will know well, have uh, adopted a, a very proactive approach to taking forward the developing young workforce agenda. I am aware 
of the pilot has been taken forward. I'm keen that we learn from it. I know that there is uh, an appetite within the regional group to try and continue and that work. Of course, it was something that they agreed with Fife Council, and uh, I believe and understand that there is still dialogue between the group and Fife Council as to how they can continue some of that work. And similarly, my officials uh, engaged with uh, Bob Garmery and the team at DYW Fife earlier this month, and we'll be speaking again uh, next week uh, around that particular issue. And I myself will be engaging with all of the employer leads uh, across all of the regional groups uh, for the developing young workforce and just as well to discuss this matter and other related matters. Thank you very much. I can squeeze in the last two questions, but only if questions and answers are as brief as possible. Question seven, Ian Gray. Ask the Scottish Government when ministers will decide whether it is safe for schools to reopen on the 11th of August. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. So, I stated in my statement to Parliament on Tuesday, all schools will reopen on the 11th of August. However, to allow appropriate physical distancing, children will return to a blended model of part-time in-school and part-time at-home learning. This, this is subject to the scientific advice that it is safe to do so, um, as the health and well-being of staff and pupils is paramount. The Scottish Government's route map, published last week, gives details of how we will implement a gradual four-phase move out of the current state of lockdown across all parts of society. Briefly, Ian Gray. So the point of my question is, at what point will the Cabinet Secretary be able to decide uh, that the virus is under control, safety measures are in place, testing and PPP is available, and the 11th of August is the day that schools will reopen? There must, must be a point at which he makes that decision. He can't do it on the morning of the 11th, obviously. Cabinet Secretary. So, so the government is going through a process of three weekly reviews of the regulations around uh, lockdown. Um, there were obviously announcements today earlier by the First Minister, which has seen us move into phase one. There will be successive uh, reviews on three weekly periods when we hope to be able to move into phase two and phase three. And obviously within phase three, it contains the date of the 11th of August as the um, uh, is the period in which we envisage schools being reopened. So, um, at the three weekly review intervals, we will be able to say more on the progress that has been made towards the reopening of schools. And we've confirmed today that schools, that staff, um, are able to return to schools as part of the phase one activities that have been approved today. And finally, James Dornan, question eight. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what stage it has reached in its contingency planning for delivering education in the event of a second wave of COVID-19 later in the year. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. So the Scottish Government will do its best to avoid a second wave of COVID-19. Uh, however, if the scientific evidence tells us that we are unable to contain the virus, it is possible that we may need to reimpose lockdown restrictions for schools and other education settings. Our primary concern is the safety and, uh, of, and well-being of staff and pupils, um, and we will ensure that pupils, education staff and families are fully supported in the event of any reoccurrence. Regardless of a second wave, children and young people will continue to be supported in their teaching and learning. Briefly, James Dornan. Thank you. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Uh, could you tell us what lessons have been learned so far from this ongoing emergency and how they can be adapted in future contingency plannings for the potential second wave of COVID-19 or for a similar crisis? Cabinet Secretary. There's been a lot of exceptionally good uh, work undertaken and undertaken at speed by members of the teaching profession to adapt many aspects of our learning and teaching to being delivered by uh, in an online environment uh, and remotely to pupils around the country. Um, the, the, that adaptation has been a significant strength to Scottish education and an approach which I think serves us well in being able to cope for any prolonged period of in-school and at-home blended learning, or in the circumstances that Mr Dornan puts to me of the possibility of there being a second wave in coronavirus, which the government is doing everything we can to try to avoid. Thank you very much. That concludes portfolio questions on education and skills. My apologies to those members who sought supplementaries and were not able to get in, uh, but I now suspend this meeting 
until 2.30 p.m. Thank you very much.